it's fine. Uh, and, like, I'm on one side of the room, and I hear up near the front of the room, and it's a, it's a pretty big building. You just hear this, boom, right? Some lady drove her car over the thing into the building. Oh. Did it take out the wall? <laughs> no, it didn't. It real good, though. And wow. if, if it, like, there was patients there, like, if the wall didn't stop it, she would plow right through the patients. Was there a reason wow. for this? She just came in and she's like, I hit the building. Oh my gosh. Was she an old lady or? Okay. Oh my gosh. And she had to, like, she had to hop the curb and then hit it. You know what I see more? I see guys just driving crazy. Like, yeah. they'll run people down. But what I see w with women drivers, too, is it seems like sometimes they just freeze up, and their and their foot just floors onto the pedal. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I said oh, that right. Yeah. Uh, oh, right, and they just, like, run into stuff just out of sheer panic. They yeah. just won't lift their foot up. I don't know. Yeah. Not all women, you know, just yeah. general. Well, a lot of times, though, they have that reaction. Like, instead, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've noticed that. Anyway. So the question of the, last, of the week last week was what makes someone wise? Did anybody have any time to think about this this week? Nicole, go ahead. Age. Do it. Age. Okay. Age. Anything? Closing your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Experience. Okay. Listening, um... To other people's input, even if you think it's bad input. Okay. Anything else? Observing. Okay. Reading the Bible. Okay. Praying. Okay. Being able to be told by someone that you're wrong about something and accepting it. That can't be. It's not in God's will for me to uh, <laughs> feel embarrassed. You're wrong. <laughs> okay, any other ideas? Now, I want to um, see if I can push this a little bit farther, so I'm going to try and not... I don't want to use the word attack, but try and press your, some of you guys' ideas and see what you guys come up with, okay? Um, one of you said um, age, and another person said experience. Um, and then there was another one. Um, and I'm not going to say that you're wrong or right. That's not my point here. I just want to see if I can push the discussion a little bit, okay? Um, age, have you ever met someone that was really old but really stupid <laughs> have you ever have you ever met someone like that i met a 50 year old who still thought that his mommy needed to be bailing him out of prison i don't know that doesn't seem very wise to me so what does that mean what, what about experience i mean paul was never married yet he had some great things to say about marriage what, what do you guys think i mean what do you guys think I think that you can gain wisdom from experience, but I think you can also gain wisdom by observing what other people go through. Mm. And that. Mm. Okay. Any other ideas? Um, I think you were the one who said experience, right? I did. Um, so what do you think? I think it goes... Hand in hand, experience and observing. Okay. Both to a uh, and and with age. Okay. I mean, all you know, all for ages. Living life how you know as God wants you to live life. Mm -hmm. And with the help of God, that be able to become. A little more wiser, a little more from 
you know, your environment from just basically all around you. Okay. Is there anyone who will try and maybe argue what Chuck said? Argue against, sorry. Argue against what Chuck said. Because you said, um, can you sum me what, what you had said earlier? I got a little bit distracted with what he had said. And I, um, oh, okay. about the, um, <clears throat> not just through experience, but by observing others, right? you can gain wisdom from what they have done. Would you guys want to try and fight that? I, what do you think? I think I agree with Chuck. Um, I, I would say with the whole um, getting older thing, though, do you mind if I go on to that? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I think as you get older, if you're open to keep learning lessons, you become wiser as you get older. But a lot of people just, once they get to a certain age, they, they, stop, they and... stop thinking that they can learn lessons and they start trying to teach other people lessons. And when it gets to that point, it seems like their um, wiseness kind of goes down, you know. Um, so do you think it is an impossibility for a young person to be wise? No, I, I've seen young people, I mean, I've seen, you know, a 15-year-old wiser than a 50-year-old. Mm -hmm. But then, you, you know, you take two other people and then it's complete opposite, you know. So I think it depends on the person and how open they are to learning. Okay. Well, and I think, I think too, like, you ever get like that, where it just pops. Yeah. You eat some. I hate that. So badly. I hate that. So, I think <laughs> that, uh, with, like, what you were saying, they get stuck in their ways. Yeah. And so they get the idea of, well, this is how we did stuff when I was your age. This is how we did <coughs> stuff. Yeah. You know. 50, 60 years ago. Yeah. So this has to be the only way. And they don't adapt to technology changing and yeah. all kinds of stuff, you know? Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's that lack of willingness to be able to adapt that keeps them from being wise. Hmm. Right. That's, because they just shut it out. I mean, that's, so the, yeah. that's the key word is adapt. So it seems like uh, observing mm -hmm. and, and learning, that that's kind of a, a staple, it seems, with, uh, with wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go back to what Chuck had said, though, about uh, learning from, from observation, because I think this is, this is worth, worth pursuing. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon says that he tried the things firsthand. Uh, that he tried the things firsthand. Do you think that he could have learned the same things by observing, or do you think that he did them as an example to us? I think he didn't do things by observing. So he didn't have to do the things that he did in Ecclesiastes? No. Okay. I don't think so. Why not? Just think about it. You don't have to have an answer right now. Just, I'm just trying to get you guys to think, okay? I, There's no right or wrong answer to this. I think most most situations you can learn by um, other people. Okay. But some situations, depending on the person, they they need to go through this situation to learn from it and grow from it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that way they can also... Um, help other people with the situations. You know? Okay. Were you about to say something? Well, uh, what I was going to say is a lot of times um, the things that we go through that our parents have went through at least something similar to it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And they try to tell us, you know, well, I already went through that. <laughs> we don't think they know what they're talking about. Right. You know? yeah. Solomon. Probably don't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Solomon. A lot of his problems had to do with women. <laughs> what did his father have problems with? <laughs> oh you know, my. he didn't learn from observing his father. No, no he just, didn't learn too much, there, did he? <laughs> it seemed like it, uh, it happened. It just kind of spiraled. Yeah. 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 
And so there is an interesting point. It seems like, if I'm hearing you guys right, in every wise person, there is an area of stupidity in them. Um, Am I hearing that from, from yes. most of what you guys are saying? I would say yes. Yes. That there is no such thing as the perfectly wise person? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. They all I, got that thing. I wanted to make sure that, that that's what I was hearing from you guys. Mm -hmm. So then um, – oh, yeah. So then uh, if you think back on your life, who – do? You, have you ever known someone that you said, oh, that was a wise person? And if so, what made them stand out so much to you as a wise person? Cannot be someone from the Bible. It has to be real life right now. Okay. Not that the Bible isn't real, but I mean <laughs> current times. I'm talking about current times. Because none of you, none of y'all knew King Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> Have any? Has anybody known someone that they consider a wise person? I would say my older brother is okay. a wise person. He didn't start out that way so much. And what made him seem like this to you? Um, he was always very um, level-headed. Okay. Um, he didn't just uh, do rash things, you know? Just like... Yes, he didn't do stuff like that. <gasps> Didn't want to be picked up by the <laughs> So. Okay. Good example. Anybody else? I would have to say my aunt. Um, she did pass away a few years ago. Uh-huh. And what made it stand out so much? She was a teacher, but she was just very intelligent. You can okay. tell by, you know, how she talked, how she did things. It was just very, you know, it had to be done a certain way, but she was very smart going about it. Uh-huh. She rarely made bad choices. Oh, okay. So you're, you're, what, what really made it stick out was her track record. Right. Okay, all right. Zach, I thought you were yeah. going to say something, yeah? Uh, my stepdad. Okay, and what, what made him st stick out so much? That he was able to um, just be cool-headed when it comes to certain situations. Yeah. <laughs> and he can handle um, people a lot and not uh, be quick to quit tempered or, or anything like that. I hope you guys – I'm sorry. I thought – go ahead. And I give him a lot of respect. Okay. I hope you guys are paying attention to what people are saying here because the thing that Chuck mentioned about his brother was more about how he – his thinking about how he approaches things, right? But Nicole and Zach were more talking about the things that these people specifically did. They didn't really reference how they thought about things. See what I mean? More, uh, I, I, let me kind of say like this. Chuck's example was theoretic, uh -huh. brain thinking, that kind right, of stuff, right. level-headed. Yeah. Um, your guys' was more applicational. This is what they did, and that made them wise to me. See what I mean? Right. So just, I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm just, uh, right. you know, pay attention to these things. Um, any other things before I move on? Any other ideas? Uh, I actually wrote a two-part blog on wisdom uh, quite a while back. I will post it onto the Yams Facebook page, and you can read it if you so desire. And um, if you don't agree with it, write down in notes why you don't agree with it and bring it to the discussion next week, okay? Um, so that takes us to the book of Proverbs. Where am I going? So in your Bible, there are some books that are called wisdom books. Um, basically, they're written, obviously, from from, Ju from the Jewish culture. Um, and they don't really – they have a different way of teaching you things. If you read in Genesis and Exodus, it pretty much just tells you, hey, do this, don't do that, right? Right. Then if you read in like First and Second Kings, for instance, it shows examples of good and bad things. But in the books of wisdom, we see a little bit different setup. Um, instead, they command us to think. You know what I mean? Like Ecclesiastes that, that goes through all these things talking about vanity of vanities. And you reach the end of the book and, and 
it doesn't give you a clear answer as to what he's saying. You have to think about what he's saying. Mm. Proverbs as well. It's not something – I mean it's probably the easiest to understand of the wisdom literature, but it still leaves you with some questions. The fear of the knowledge is the beginning of, all, of wisdom. Why? Why? It makes the, wants to, See what wants I mean? To, and it doesn't answer you know. that all the time. It answers in parts here and there throughout the uh. book. But it doesn't clearly answer. You have to think about it as you're huh. going. Um, the uh, book of Job. There's another one of the it, – it, it, it says many things that people think while they're having hard times. You know, I'm going through this because of this or because of that. And then throughout the course of these dialogues, it, ha it says things in this real long, almost complicated, poetical way. And you have to just sit back and think for a second, wait, what did he just say and what does it have to do with anything? Like they'll say, you're in, Job, you're in this because of this. And he'll go on through this thing about, uh, you know – God numbered the days and did it. It's like, what are you talking about, Joe? <laughs> yes. And you have you to stop and think, like, how does that apply? See yeah. what I mean? And the meanings are hidden. They're not just out there. Yeah. You have to think. And that's really the defining factor of wisdom literature. Um, so Proverbs was mostly uh, from King Solomon. He probably didn't write any of it, if any of it. You know, He probably didn't write most of it. Right. Um, probably scribes and those kinds of people – you know, did the actual writing. The Proverbs were mostly from him, it's, but he probably wasn't the one personally writing them down. Right. Um, um, he is the, the son of King David. King David was the first uh, real king of Israel. Uh, king Saul was the first king, but he never had all of the 12 tribes under his rule. He never um, was, um, I don't want to say validated, but uh, confirmed by God in his kingship. You right. know, that, that, but David was. Um, and David uh, received a promise from God about how his son would be would be forever on the throne, obviously talking about Jesus. Um, and then he had a son uh, who was King Solomon, who was called the wisest person um, in the world. So it was put together by scribes sometime in its final form around 700 BC. This is about when the king has when King Hezekiah was alive. Now. What brings up King Hezekiah? <laughs> about halfway through the book, somewhere around in the 20s-something, um, it talks about how King Hezekiah got his scribes together and, and, and they compiled the second half of the book of Proverbs. So in other words, there were Proverbs that were not put together that, that, that Hezekiah's people put into one book. Um, and Hezekiah was was um, a king in the southern kingdom after the kingdom had split into two. Mm -hmm. If you want to read more about King Hezekiah, um, read the books of Kings. Um, and Hezekiah is also in the books of Chronicles. So, um, <clears throat> and then at the same time, Hezekiah probably uh, Hezekiah's scribes also added the other wise sayings, which is chapter thirty and thirty one, uh, Agur, Lemuel, and the wise wife, um, and. Uh, but uh, as far as the content itself, Proverbs, uh, Proverbs was, was mostly by, by Solomon. Um, and if Solomon did write it himself, instead of having a scribe write it down for him, um, he wrote about chapters 1 through 20, I think it's like 4 or something like that. Um, and then Hezekiah did, uh, put the rest of it together as, a, as, the fin as the finale of what we know of as Proverbs. Um, it, the, the main theme of, of Proverbs is a wise ways to live. It really addresses, this is how you should live. You know? um, whereas um, Song of Solomon and, and those other ones, they give us exceptions to the way that you should live. And Proverbs, he says, hey, this is what you should look for in a man. Hey, women, this is what you should look for in a, in a, in a man. Did I say that right? <laughs> men, this is what you should look for in a woman. Women, this is what you should look for in a man. And uh, Song of Solomon, we see the opposite. Whoops, we fell in love. <laughs> The first little exception. Then uh, in, in Proverbs it says, hey, do these things and, and this is you know good things are going to happen to you. But then in Job we see bad things happen to a good guy with no with seemingly no answer. Yeah. Then in uh, Ecclesiastes we see – well, I'm getting off topic, but you see what I'm saying. Yeah. The Proverbs is the basic jest of how to live, okay? Right. which leads us to a few things to note. A proverb is not a command or a promise. A proverb is an observation about the world. Okay, um, it's like for instance, the sun rises in the west, but it sets in the east. Did I say that right? Rises in the east and sets in. The... Wait, hold on. <laughs> yes, I said that wrong. Rises in the east and sets in the west. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> Royal Ranger, are you? <laughs> right? Like I don't even know where we are right now. Um, 
but that's important to notice because a lot of times Proverbs will say something like do this or don't do this. It's not giving us commands. It's saying, hey, generally speaking, this is a good idea for you to do. You know, like, hey, not a good idea for you to co-sign a loan. Just something out there. Not a very good idea. You know, Proverbs gives us little bits like that. Now, it, you can co-sign on a loan, you know, and God's not going to throw down firebolts from heaven, <laughs> but you are going to find yourself in a pickle. Yeah. See what I mean? And that's what Proverbs is about. It's not telling you, hey, you have to do this. It's saying, you should probably do this. It's a smart thing for you to do. Um, so, everybody under, kind of understand that? Any questions so far? You look like you have a question for me, no? Okay. Um, Solomon got his wisdom directly from God. He was considered the wisest man. This is actually a very important point because we get wisdom, you know, we learn it throughout life, and God, you know, we ask God for wisdom, and he, he gives us wisdom to an extent. But one of the foundational points of Solomon, I mean, so, uh, Song of Solomon, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes is that it was from this person who is the wisest person of all time and got his wisdom from God. That is, that, that's important for a few reasons. First off, when we read Ecclesiastes, and he, he says he did these things. That's important for us to know because basically what the Bible is saying is the wisest person in the world tried this, and it didn't work. It's not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he was an example for us. Um, so that's actually one of the main important points of the Bible when it talks about Solomon's wisdom is that it was directly from God, not from people. Very important point. Proverbs, they, these seem like just a bunch of really, really well thought out things, but Solomon didn't just come up with them, with these out of his own, you know, brain. God was directing him in his observations. See what I mean? So when we read in Proverbs and he says, "Hey, not a good idea to co-sign on a loan," God is inspiring him in that and saying, "Oh, hey, God has showed me that this is not a good thing for me to do." See what I mean? And uh, one of the main things, so if the wisest person ever lived says, hey, it's not a good idea to co-sign a loan. Do you think you are wiser than this person who received their wisdom directly from God? Right. See what I mean? Solomon was an example for us, and that's why the Bible emphasizes so strongly that he received his wisdom from God. Right. So that you would not think that you are wiser than him and yeah. think, oh, I'm the exception to the rule. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. So. Um, I already said this psalm as an example to us. If it didn't work for him, it won't work, won't work for us. I already mentioned that. Um, and then uh, last thing I want to say about introdu introducing Proverbs. There are probably Proverbs from Solomon that are not in the book of Proverbs. Okay, I think it's Second Kings mentions about a lot of these other Proverbs that, that Solomon had, and it seems like he had a lot of other Proverbs that had to do with animals and that kind of stuff. And in Proverbs, we only see a few that had to do with animals. So, I don't know. It seems like there are more out there. Um, will we ever find those? Probably not. <laughs> at this point, they are 3,000 years old, and if they haven't been discovered, they've probably been destroyed at this point. <laughs> so, um, as far as the outline for the book... Um, in chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, we have the purpose of wisdom, which is important because the whole rest of the book is going to talk about that. And then there are 13 messages from Solomon to youth that start out something like this. Here, here are my words, my son. There's 13 of these messages between chapter 1, verse 8, all the way through chapter 9 through 18. We're going to look at each of those 13 messages at part, in particular, and I think we're going to look at 1 through 3 tonight. Um, then there's just general proverbs, and you can break these up into different different parts, but just general proverbs, chapter 10 through chapter 22, verse 16. And then there are uh, what's called words of uh, words of the wise. This, these are basically more proverbs, just sli written slightly different. Um, they break themselves into different parts. When you reach chapter 22, verse 17, it says, "These are the words of the wise." You know, I mean? it, it breaks itself into these categories, um, and then um, Hezekiah's collection is chapter 25 through 29, and then there's the others, just uh, anonymous and other people um, there at the end of the book. Agur and Lemuel um, right, uh, have sections in chapter 30, and then chapter 31 is dedicated to the wife of character. We don't know who wrote that. Uh, maybe Solomon, maybe one of them, maybe somebody else in total. We really don't know. Um, and uh, yeah. 
so not all verses are connected because of the nature of Proverbs. Sometimes when you're reading, you know, obviously most of the time when you're reading through the Bible, read the verses before and after it. Proverbs, sometimes, but not always, because it's a collection of, of sayings. And a lot of them are very distinct from each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, really our tendency as Proverbs is to kind of just book through them. I would I would discourage you to read it like that. I would encourage you to read it like one to three verses at a time, just kind of focusing on the idea and thinking about it. Yeah. Because once again, that's that's the idea of Proverbs. Think about this. You know? So as you read it through, you might want to read it through slower. Uh, I know some people uh, read it through um, uh, in a month, you know, because there's 31 chapters. Yeah, you know. chapter a day. Right. And this this works, you know. Um, uh, w when you do that, I've noticed that, that certain verses will hop out to you every time through. Right. You know, different verses, or a, a verse that you've already read will will hop out in a different way. Um, you know, and, and so you can do that. Um, I personally prefer to do verse by verse, so you can really just sink your teeth into what's being said. Um, everybody, good on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go through Proverbs chapter one. We'll start with uh, the first section, which is verses one through seven. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. Um, and then in verse 2, he starts with the purpose. Okay, To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight. So these are, the, these are things that happen with your thinking, right? To receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity. Okay, so right there what he just did is he connected the way we think with the way we act. Okay? Right. Um, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity. Um, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth, let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, fools despise wisdom and instruction. So let's break that apart. The first thing we see is to learn. It says in verse 2, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight. Uh, that you would you'd be able to to to, to learn you know um, I, I somebody said we were talking about and somebody said um, you know w one of the marks of wisdom is in a continual growth pattern that that learning I think uh, is it you and then you mentioned it too about you know observing and constantly yeah. being able to adapt and, sure. and, and learn and that kind of stuff um, that that's that's one of the one of the key foundations and that's one of the purposes to proverbs it helps us to continue to learn. You know, um, so to know wisdom and instruction. So instruction is, you know, th think about think about the words we're saying here. Wisdom is, you know, up here, level head, like he said, right? Mm -hmm. and instruction that's, you know, being able to be told what to do, right? right? You can listen to some, what somebody's saying. To understand, uh, what does it say? To know wisdom and instruction from people who you like. No. No. The wise is wise because they are wise, not because it was delivered to them in a good way. To understand words of insight. So when thing when when somebody says something to you, to be able to comprehend what they're really saying. You know what I mean, uh, verse three: to receive instruction in wise dealing. So you'll know how to how you should conduct yourself. Okay, to understand and right here to know what to do. So you can comprehend what. And a lot of times people do this. God, show me how to how to respond in this situation. God, show me what to do in this situation. And it's like, well, uh, yeah. He's given as a template. In the book of Proverbs and in other places of the Bible, mm -hmm. that shows how we should correctly handle our finances, right? Um, our our child is arrested and they're asking us to bail them out with bail money. What should we do? Our child wants to buy a house, but they don't qualify for the loan. What should we do? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing are you seeing kind of the the the, the way that God has given us the means to learn if we want to learn. The problem is, we oftentimes just don't want to learn. <laughs> well, we want the answer handed over to us. We don't yeah. Want right. We don't want to. And a lot of times, I. Sorry, I didn't. We. we you just didn't don't want to. Yeah. Use our brain. And yeah. Think. Um, and I. <laughs> yeah. To give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. So right there, prudence to the simpler, or you know, help the help the, the, the foolish people to not act so foolishly. Right. Um, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Okay. Let the wise hear and increase in learning. So it's for two people here. The stupid people to get smarter 
and the smart people to get smarter. Right. <laughs> See what I mean? Basically, there's no one who Proverbs is not for. Um, to understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and the riddles. To really get to understand these things. Um, and so the, the, the cure for foolishness, Proverbs. <laughs> uh -huh. To grow in a relationship with God, our wisdom correlates with our relationship with God. Because he was just giving reasons, right, for Proverbs. And then what does he say in verse 7? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So whereas a fool, they can't be told what to do. A wise person, in, instead, the, 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 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of, of that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So clearly, wisdom is connected with our walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. What does it matter how I live my life? A spiritually uh, immature Christian. Yeah. What is, my fa finances are on my own. What does it matter if I co-sign a loan, if I do this, if I do that, and the other thing? A spiritually immature Christian. Right. See what I mean? So, uh, not that we should judge others, but that we can correctly judge ourselves. Okay? Right. I'm not teaching you guys to go judge other people. <laughs> um, one of the things that you see throughout the book of Proverbs, and this is actually talked about in Ecclesiastes as well, is why the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Any ideas? Because if you fear God, you know... Listen to his family? Exactly. If somebody fears God, they have a reason for doing right and wrong. If I don't fear God, why should I live any different than the next person? What does it matter? Yeah. But if I fear the Lord, I have reason for wisdom. Mm -hmm. And if I have a reason for wisdom, I will find wisdom. Mm -hmm. But a fool despises instruction. He doesn't listen to God. Why should he care what other people have to say? He's going to live however he wants to live, and that's just going to be how he, what he decides. Right. See what I mean? Contrast. So that's the, that's the first section of, Prover of Proverbs, which talks about the purpose. Now we're going to talk into the first message to the youth. And this is in verses 8 through 9 of chapter 1. Hear my, hear my son your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful garland for your hand, I'm sorry, for your head, and pendants for your neck. Um, kind of a short section there, but still. Um, and it's really a simple message. Hey, listen to your parents. There in verse 8, hear my son your father's instruction, forsake not your mother's teaching. Pretty pretty straightforward on that one. Um, and so what what is the what is the benefit of the, of the of this message to listen to your parents? Well, there's quite a few things. They are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that they will help you. They will mature you. You will they will bring you honor. Right. They will make you more attractive, not so much in the physical sense, although I do have to say, uh, have you ever noticed, seen an attractive girl that knows that she's attractive and it's just she doesn't seem that attractive anymore? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that before? Yeah. So I will say sometimes, yeah, that is true. Sometimes it won't make you more physically attractive. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, I mean more attractive on the on, on the heart, right. the part that matters, your character. Um, and actually, one of the things that um, have you ever gone shopping and you see the kid that. Uh, is yelling at their mom and runs away from their mom, and you're just thinking, what a freaking brat. Yes. It's the same thing when we're old and we mistreat our parents. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. It's a graceful garland. It, 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 it adorns us. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a show of your character. See what I mean? If you want to find somebody who's wise, a lot of times look at how they treat their parents. See what I mean? Um, which, word of warning to those who are single... Zach, okay. hey. if you guys you know ever decide to pursue things, pay attention to how they're treating their parents. Um, so, mm -hmm. and it will help you. He talks about this later about the way that the, the, you, the, you, the words of your parents won't, won't depart from you. They'll, they'll they'll keep you in the right way that you should go. He talks about that a lot. He talks a lot about the way that it'll help you uh, help you mature and that kind of stuff. Um, so, I already mentioned that. <laughs> The, nobody likes a spoiled, a spoiled, bitter brat. The ability to listen is prized, and that's that's throughout all cultures. Um, if you look, look in Exodus twenty twelve, uh, it talks it talks about this. Excuse me. <clears throat> Honor your father and your mother, and your day um, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Why would your days be land? <laughs> 
Why would your days be long? <laughs> I don't know why my days would be land. <laughs> why, why would your days be long? Because when you listen to other people's advice, you don't make the stupid stupid mistakes that you could have made, and right. thereby your chances of living longer is better. are better. <laughs> hey, don't touch the oh it's the stove. I guess I'm gonna go turn on the oven and climb inside. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. If you listen to people, <laughs> respect and honor your parents. But there's also another side to Exodus 20:12. 20 verse 12, is that God blesses us as we respect and honor our parents. Okay, that, that's another side of this. There's a physical application, but then, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, physical, but then there's also a supernatural application that, that God will literally, now, just so that we're clear, we're not Israelites, so this promise doesn't apply to us anyways. It's still something that God wants, obviously, but just because we honor our parents doesn't mean that we aren't going to die young. Okay, this is just a general thing. Okay, so, and then the next thing in First uh, Timothy two nine through ten, I'm not going to turn there, but it's the part where he talks about um, women adorning themselves not with the outward things but with their inward character, mm -hmm. and this is one of the things I want to highlight. These kinds of things are important for our character, you know, and the character is really what matters and what God you know, is going to be paying attention to. So, uh, listening to your parents, that takes us to the second message, uh, chapter one verse ten. Uh, and it goes down uh, through uh, verse boop, 19. Okay. Hear, my son, your father's uh, instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching. I'm going to turn this thing on. There we go. My, uh, where am I? Verse 10. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without reason like Sheol. Let us swallow them alive and whole like those who go down to the pit. If we uh, we shall find all precious goods, we shall fill our houses with plunder. Throw in your lot among us, we will all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Hold back your foot from their past, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. For in vain is a net spread in the sight of any bird. But these men lie in wait for their own blood. They set an ambush for their own lives. Such are the ways of everyone who is greedy for unjust gain. It, uh, it takes away the life of its uh, possessors. So a few things. Let's start with uh, the, the first part there, uh, verses uh, 10 through 14 specifically. Um People don't really talk like this. <laughs> okay, you have to listen to the implications of what somebody is saying. L listen to this, my son. If sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, "Come with us, let us lie and wait for blood," well, they're not actually going to say that. They're, they're going to say, "Hey, look, uh, we know this house. You know, that's they leave the back door unlocked. You know, I, we'll be able to. You know, nobody's going to be home. Nobody's going to get hurt. We'll be able to see. What I mean, they're going to talk somewhere like that. They're not going to say." Hey, let's spill some blood. You know what I mean? <laughs> very, very. Those are called psychopaths, and very rarely are you gonna actually. <laughs> and then let's drink it off the floor. <laughs> yeah. Um, like Sheol, let us swallow them alive and whole. What he's 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 um defining the things that they will be doing, not what they will actually be saying. Right. What he's saying here, <laughs> it's kind of funny because in this you have to have wisdom to kind of understand what he's saying here, but he's saying this so you'll have wisdom. Yeah. So it's like, well, that's quite a conundrum. <laughs> what he's saying is that you have to be wise and listen to what people are actually saying. Listen to the implications of what, they're say, wait, what they say. For instance, uh, in, in politics, how many times do you hear people say, free this, free that? Oh, yeah. Now, do we? Is, is there actually anything that's free in life? So how can they offer free college, free fill-in-the-blank? Yeah. See what I mean? Someone else has to pay for it. Someone has to pay for it somewhere. Right. Listen to the implications of what people are saying because politicians do this all the time. Oh, yeah. They make a thousand promises. I mean Trump was going to was gonna get – what was the big thing? I'm going to build a wall between us and Mexico, yeah. and Mexico is going to pay for it. Repeal okay. Obamacare first hand. Yeah, right. repeal Obamacare. Hillary is going to go to go to prison. Yeah. And what happened with that stuff? See what I mean? Yeah. Listen to the implications of what people are saying. Trump promised angry people revenge. Uh -huh. And then that's what he's done. Ever since he got in office, he's acted in the character of what he said he would said he was going to do. Although he did not follow through on the actions, his character is exactly what was what was shown. Right. Listen to the implications. The implications of what people are saying. 
more than the words that they're saying. See what I mean? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Um, and especially there, I, I want to go back to that again. Come with us. Let it, let us lie and wait for blood. Let you know. Let let's just look to see what we can get into. Uh, let us ambush the innocent. I mean, my dad used to say, "Don't let money burn a hole in your pocket." These are people who are just looking for something wrong to do. Let us ambush the innocent without reason. Let, let, let's let's give somebody something they didn't deserve. <laughs> like Sheol, let us swallow them alive and whole like those who go down to the pit. Let's completely consume whatever we want for our own pleasure. Yeah. How many times do you see do you see people do this when they date? I mean, you're just going to completely consume this other person. It doesn't matter. The implications. They're there for me. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, but you don't understand. They love me. Oh, okay. Listen to the implications of the person you're, da you're dating. The implications are more important than what they're actually saying. Um, uh, also, uh, I wanted to mention this. Uh, pay attention to what you're doing. You can actually support an organization that supports abortion, for instance. You can you can be against something and then support an organization that that condones it. Um, Gracie, as an example, was this last week was looking you know for different phone providers and whatnot, see if we could save any more pennies. And uh, she found out that this one was that they give however much of their proceeds to help women get abortions. Then she found out that Wells Fargo does it too. Then she found out that Walmart does it too, and Albertsons does it too. Lowe's doesn't, but Albertsons and Walmart do. So. In one side of our mouth, we're saying, I don't stand for that. But then on the other side of the mouth, we're paying for it. Yeah. And then she found out there are some organizations that pay on both sides. They pay the pro-life and the pro-choice. Uh, uh, they pay to both organizations. Uh. And then there are some who pay to a third or a third party, so it keeps their hands clean, but the third party then goes and supports that. So it's like, well... Now, I'm not saying boycott things. Right. I, I, you're going to have to make your own decisions on what you should and shouldn't do. That's between you and God. What I am saying, pay attention to what you're doing and the implications of what you're doing. Oh, I, I just bank with Wells Fargo. Yes, but you have a credit card, which you pay interest on. The interest goes to Wells Fargo, which they then give to help women get abortions. What are the implications of what you're doing? In the same way, what are the implications of what people are telling you to do? See what I mean? And that's really the call of Proverbs, to pay attention just pay attention, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> and then in verses 15 through 16, my son, do not walk in the way with them. Hold back your foot from their paths, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. They're ha they're hurrying up to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. The idea here is treasure morality, treasure right. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. Listen to what he says here. Do not walk in the way with them. Hold back your foot from their past. Why? For their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed blood. The first reason why you shouldn't go along with them is just because it's not right to go along with them. Right. So, I mean, do things not because you're being forced to, but because it's the right thing to do. But then he doesn't stop there. Um, another reason he gives is because they will trap themselves. For in verses 17 through 18, for in vain is a net spread in the sight of any bird, but these men lie in wait for their own blood. They set an ambush for their own life. So basically, what he's saying is this: if a bird sees you put up a trap, it's not going to go into the trap. You're not going to catch the bird. Right. But what these people are doing is that they are setting a trap for themselves, and they're going to catch themselves in their own trap. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a an interesting an interesting idea there, and that and and what he's saying. It, I'm going to go into it a little bit. I have a whole note section here. But first thing that he's saying is that there are consequences to the things that we do. They think that they're so smart. They think that they're going to get something, but they're going to end up with nothing. They will, there will be consequences to their actions. Um, I'll come right back to this. Let's move ahead to the last verse here, verse 19. Um, and that's oh, – sorry. That's my alarm telling me that it's about time. Um, in verse 19, he, he, he tells us that there really is no such thing as easy money. Such are the ways of everyone who is greedy for unjust gain. It takes away the life of its possessors. Mm. Remember we talked about greed a couple weeks ago? Mm -hmm. And this is kind of what exactly what we came down to. Greed consumes and demands more. The more we justify greed, the more it demands. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, if I just get the perfect job, then I'll be happy. Then we get the perfect job, and we want a raise. We want more money. We want the – see what I mean? Because greed isn't satisfied. And that's kind of exactly what he just said in verse 19. Such are the ways. That's just the way it goes with everyone who is greedy for unjust gain. That's how, that's how the inevitable end is going to be. It takes away the life of its possessors. It sucks you dry. The more you give it, the more it demands. 
exactly what we said a couple weeks ago in the in a section on greed. So there's no such thing as easy money, um, as as he shows us here. Greed consumes and demands more. So there's a few things I want to reference in verses 17 through 18. Choosing to live life immorally sets a trap for yourself. Excuse me. Excuse me. Just a second. <clears throat> Choosing to do what's wrong sets a trap for yourself. And it does it in a number of ways. First off, you never really get what you want. Pastor said it like this a few Sundays ago. There's two people who are, who are not happy with money. People who get it and people who don't. So you, you, people think that, that money is gonna gonna provide them some kind of a happiness, and it just doesn't. And then later on in Proverbs, so not only here does he warn against these people who, oh, we're gonna make a real quick easy buck. Later on he warns again. Hey, actually I think it's Lemuel who says it, but um, instead of being rich or poor, you know, have enough. And we'll get to that when we get to chapter thirty. So don't worry about that right now. Um, But then also there's the idea that doing the right thing is its own reward. As you do what's right, there's just a certain happiness that goes along with it. So then uh, he, he kind of seems to be implying be the bird because he's talking about these other people. For in vain is a, is, a, uh, is a net spread in the sight of any bird, but these men lie in wait for their own blood. It seems like he's saying, hey, abstain from these people. Be a bird. See that there's putting a, putting a trap? Keep flying by. <laughs> you know, um, And then also, um, in desiring wealth, they lose the greatest wealth. See, by seeking a quick, easy buck, they're choosing the ways of death. And God promises that in choosing immorality, we inherit death and curse. You mentioned that in Deuteronomy and throughout the word. Mm -hmm. Doing the wrong thing brings on punishment. In fact, Roman says it like this: They're awaiting the wrath of God. They're building up. They're building up wrath points, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and they will eventually be caught. Okay, so not only do they lose the eternal wealth, but they will also uh, be caught. See how it says this? They set an ambush for their own lives. They're gonna get caught. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and when the, when people are caught, did you know that they lose everything? Mm -hmm. How many people do you see in prison? Thinking, wow, I'm really glad that I stole that money that now the police have because they caught me. See what I mean? And uh, television shows make it make it out to be like people get away all the time and you know all these great things. And they're all oh, like uh, you see it a lot. People with morality that are murderers, like uh, John Wick. Did anybody see John Wick? How he murders people for a living, but he's just got this good character to him. Immorality breeds immorality. That's just we can't put boundaries up on it. it it was an intense movie though <laughs> and then also another thing if you notice in verse 14 it says throw in your lot among us we will all have one purse except nope greedy people will always turn on each other yeah. Oh, yeah. one purse that leads to people fighting over money and yeah. it just doesn't work <laughs> Bad things are at, are at stake. Even if you're just doing it, and even if you're the one who's doing the evil thing, it still isn't going to work for you. Even if you don't have any, any partners. Um, um, and then uh, another thing uh, that I noticed with this: uh, these men lie in wait for their own blood. They set an average for their own lives. Have you guys ever talked to a druggie? One of the things you see them do is that everyone is a mark. Everyone is a fool. Everyone is stupid. Everyone's got an angle. Nobody's ever just saying something. Nobody's really just – they're full. If, if you give them someone out of the generosity of your heart, it's because they played you. It's not because you were nice to them because nobody's ever nice to anybody. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. They had this mindset to them. And then they also have this mindset. I'm right. No matter what, I'm right. Um, everyone else is wrong, but I'm right. And what does that do? That sets an ambush for ourselves. Because we don't even see the error of our ways because the more sin we take on, the more our changing thing is uh, – thinking changes. And the more our thinking changes, the more we can become blinded to what God uh, – to, to, to the destruction that we are leading ourselves into. Just like a druggie will say, oh, no, you know, the, I'm, these people are just marks, and then they end up in jail. See, they were blinded to their own coming destruction. So – uh, the third message, and this is the final part that we're going to look at tonight, is in verses 20 through 33. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the city, gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? 
How long will you scoffers delight in their scoffing, and fools hate knowledge? If you turn up my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you, because I have called, and you refuse... I'm um, sorry. I will make my, my words known to you. Verse 24. Because I have called, and you refuse to listen, listen I um, have stretched out my hand, and no one has heeded. Because you have ignored all my counsel, and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you. When terror strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind. When distress and anguish uh, come upon you, they will uh, then they will uh, call upon me. This is a nice way of saying hindsight is fifty er, 2020. Right. You see things great after the fact, then I will laugh at you. Mm. After the fact, you're, oh, wow, suddenly I see wisdom awful clearly. <laughs> then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Would have none of my counsel and despise all of my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and, their, and have their fill of their own uh, devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away and... The complacency of fools destroys them, but whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread or disaster. First thing we need to note, it's been equated that Jesus appears in the book of Proverbs as wisdom. This is not true. Uh, wisdom is personified here um, as a woman, and the idea is that um, it's someone who's – it's something that you can get to. Okay, um, It's not really something that's pointing towards Christ. Um, Christ is later – Equated as wisdom, but this isn't something that was originally meant in Proverbs. Okay, does not is not implying about Jesus here. It's just an, it's just personifying the idea of wisdom so we can understand it better. Okay, like let's say um, I was going to try to teach you about sin, and so I made sin um, an angry truck driver. You know, and this diesel truck driver, he's running over rabbits and, and chickens and ducks. See what I mean? It, sin isn't actually a truck driver, it, but I'm telling you a story that helps you personify it so you can understand it better. Right. Okay, so um, and the 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 third was message here is don't reject wisdom even though it will cause sorrow. As you grow in wisdom, you will be faced with a lot of sorrow in your life, and eventually you'll come to this conclusion: Why does it even matter if I'm wise or not? People aren't going to listen to me no matter what I do. Um, and, and the idea is that this. It may seem like that, but it, but it does matter. And the whole book of Proverbs, Proverbs shows us why it matters. And he walks us through why it matters. Um, and right here he specifically says, hey, wisdom is going to have a reward, and so is, so is foolishness. So um, there are distractions, but wisdom can, e can be easily – I'm sorry. my. <laughs> okay. Here we are. We got here. Um in verse 20, uh, we'll just start at 20. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the market, she raises her voice. The idea here is that she, she can be found if you should look for her. And then verse 21. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. There are distractions. There are always distractions in life. But wisdom can be found if you simply look for it. Right? Have you ever been in a city that's really, really busy? We don't have them now. It's like they did back then. But there are people talking, people negotiating prices. There were shot. Uh, there were all the all the people. Places just right outside. Right. Yeah. There, there all kinds of stuff going on, and there's all this noise. It's very loud. And over there, wisdom is crying out. It's there if you just look for it. But there are distractions around. Okay. Wisdom can be found if you seek. But there are also other things in your life that will get your attention too. So you have to make a decision that you actually want wisdom because there's going to be a lot of, a lot of things competing for your attention. Um, and then <clears throat> in verse 22, how long, O simple one, will you love being simple? How long will you scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? So then it brings up the question, do you really want to change? Because oftentimes we kind of tell ourselves that we want to change, but do you really want to though? That means that you have to stop doing what you're doing. Look what she just said. How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? What she's saying here is you're going to have to change the way that you're doing things. You're going to have to change the way that you're thinking about things. If, you are any, if you're not a stranger to social media, you know that people don't want to change their opinions. And then they want to uh, proclaim it loudly before all the internet. Okay? So, also we see that wisdom comes in stages gradually as we seek after it. Look in verse 23. If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will part my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. If you respond to me, I will give you more. 
The idea is this: that as we seek, as we see, ask the Lord for wisdom, as, as we as we try to grow in wisdom, we'll have opportunities to change, to grow, to learn. And if we accept those opportunities and we grow and change and learn, we'll get more of those opportunities and we'll grow in wisdom. Or we can harden our hearts and do the same stupid thing that we do regularly and we don't learn a thing. Right. Then hop down to verse 28 and it says the same thing in a different way. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Why will they, will not, why will they not find wisdom after the fact? Because wisdom isn't just acquired in an instant. It's acquired over the span of time. They neglected wisdom their whole lives, and now that they're in trouble, they're going to try and, oh, now I want to shape up and I want to do the right thing. They're not going to be wise because they haven't given wisdom the proper time. It's like someone who doesn't practice the guitar and then wants to go out and jam in a band. Yeah. It just, it's a... Right. It's not going to happen. Were you going to say something? Well, say something? You, you see this in the example of people who... Um, they they don't take care of their health all through their life. Right. They smoke, they're right. you know, overweight or whatever, diabetes and all kinds of stuff. And then they get uh, this news when they're already like 75 or whatever, you know. Well. And they're like, oh, well, now they want to change. But right. now it's too late. Yeah. Ex that's a yeah, really that's good perfect. example. That, that actually hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. Wow. Uh, they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Wow. That's... Wisdom is its own reward. Look in 20, verses 29 through 33. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despise all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way and have their fill of their own devices. For, for the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. The complacency of fools. I'm okay where I'm at. I don't have to change. I don't have to grow. I'm doing all right. Hey, so you mean the complacency of fools. Well, wise people are marked by their ability to learn and grow and change and adapt. Those things we were talking about. Fools are marked by their complacency. Complacency. I don't want to learn. I don't want to change. This is where I'm at. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread, dread or disaster. So that there's the idea that wisdom is its own reward, and rejecting it leads to consequences that there's just no no cure from. So I'll read there in verse. Uh, we stopped in verse 24. So I'm gonna read 24 through. Because I have called and you refuse to listen, have stretched out my hand and no one has heeded. Because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I'll mock when terror strikes you. When terror strikes you like a storm, and your calamity uh, uh, comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Any any questions? And this is remember, Proverbs, don't think just because we're going through Proverbs that you're going to learn everything you need to about the Book of Proverbs. The more you read, the the more wisdom you'll get. <laughs> okay. I'm just giving you a real basic thing. And the reason why I know that is because I'm not the wisest person in the world. Now am I? Is my name Solomon? <laughs> then I can promise you that my, the things that I'm going to say in here are just going to be a very basic understanding of the book of, that somebody else wrote. How much more if you personally go read that book and you ask the Lord for wisdom and understanding it? See? I could be the smartest person in the world, the dumbest person in the world, I still won't get the same stuff into you that God can get into you by you studying. Okay? So, um, question of the week. What two characters are compared throughout the book of Proverbs? Sorry. Throughout the book of Proverbs. Think about that. Read through, the, read through as much of Proverbs as you can over the next week. And, and you know, I'm going to post those blogs uh, probably tomorrow. Um, actually, I've posted them probably two years ago, so I'll share them on the on the Yams Facebook page. Um, and if you have a chance or if you want to, read those through. Um, if you disagree with them, you know, write why you disagree with them. If there's something that um, really stuck out to you, I mean, let's let's see what we can learn from the book of Proverbs. Any questions? Tell you what, I'm really learning a lot of stuff just in preparing the lessons.